From the scorching sands of the Sahara to the idyllic waters of the Atlantic, dive into the hot, exotic land of Morocco. Join us as we explore this ancient land where civilizations have crossed paths for eons. The history of Morocco traces its roots to antiquity, and because there was no Morocco then, we will only be discussing the state under Islamic rule and the modern-day equivalent. If you want to learn more about North African civilization in general, please leave a comment below. Morocco has always been the crossroads of civilization, from the Carthaginians to the Romans, from the Berbers or Imagizans, and finally to the numerous caliphates that ruled it for centuries. No wonder its culture is as varied as its people. The Berber population that lived in the area were once Jewish and Christians until the arrival of the caliphates, converting them to Islam. Arab invaders in the 7th century assimilated the local population. By the 12th century, the Almohad dynasty had full doctrinal control over Berber society. During the Reconquista, or the Reconquest of Spain, after numerous Muslim invasions, Jewish and Muslim refugees brought with them Hispanic culture to Morocco. However, it should be noted that the Europeans never really conquered North Africa. In the 16th century, during the height of the Ottoman Empire, the former attempted to conquer Morocco in 1558, but failed making Morocco virtually the only untouched Arab country, never being assimilated by the Ottomans. By the 17th century, another dynasty came into power, the Alawite dynasty, who continued to rule Morocco to this day. It was then that Morocco's identity as an Islamic monarchy was fully established under the guidance of Sultan Maulay Ismail. He subdued all parts of the country using a slave army and instituted changes to centralized rule. By the 18th and 19th centuries, Morocco would isolate itself from the rest of the world, most especially Europe, which was embroiled in constant war. The time from 1830 to 1912 was a tumultuous time for Morocco. The French invaded Algeria in 1830 and Morocco dispatched soldiers but was forced to retreat after French protests. During the preceding events and battles, the Moroccan army was eventually defeated. A figure in Algerian history, Abdel Qader was defeated by the French and was forced to take refuge in Morocco. However, he was attacked by Moroccan troops and eventually surrendered to the French. Another significant event in Moroccan history is the dispute between the country and Spain over the territory of Ceuta, which led Madrid to declare war on Morocco. The latter lost again and was forced to give up another enclave, if nigh, to the Spanish. In 1901, an aspiring new sultan, Abd al-Aziz, set his sights on European customs and attempted to adopt them to Moroccan culture. However, this was scandalous to the local leaders at the time. An attempt to introduce a modern scheme of land taxation fueled the ire of the local population even more. The Europeans used this internal turmoil to their advantage. All the main European powers set their sights on Morocco. In 1906, the powers met in Algeciras to confirm the integrity of the Sultan's domains, but sanctioned French and Spanish ships from policing the waters of the country. Abd al-Hafiz, the Sultan's brother, rebelled against him, causing the Sultan to flee. Abd al-Hafiz was proclaimed as Sultan and recognized by the European powers. He was an unpopular leader, so much so that he requested French help. In exchange for their help, he signed a treaty that made Morocco a French protectorate, starting a new stage in the history of the country. The French Protectorate of Morocco was established in 1912. The French had difficulties as the Moroccans were fiercely independent. However, the Treaty of Algeciras divided some parts of Morocco between Spain and France, particularly in the north and southwest. The Sultan was still active, 
However, the French were the real authorities during this period. During World War II, a large Moroccan force was sent to help the French forces in the liberation of France in 1933, serving with distinction. However, the Nazi regime connected with the Vichy French government introduced more problems to an already problematic and confusing situation for the fiercely independent Moroccans. The arrival of the Americans in 1942 introduced the Moroccans to the outside world, and a call for independence amongst young Arabs was immediately felt. By 1944, a new independence movement, Hizb al istiklal came into fruition. They submitted a memorandum requesting for independence and constitutional reforms that very same year. Independence was declared on March 2, 1956, after decades of French interference and thousands of arrests. Despite its inadequacies, the French protectorate was able to help modernize Morocco. However, the designs were very colonial to say the least. France and Morocco maintained lukewarm relationships despite the latter's support of Algeria in the Franco-Algerian War. Morocco has a GDP of $131 billion, making it one of the richest North African countries. At least 57% of the GDP is from services, 30% from industry, and 14% from agriculture. Agricultural products include wheat, milk, olives, sugar beets, potatoes, tomatoes, tangerines, mandarins, oranges, apples, and onions. Moroccan heavy industry includes automotive parts, phosphate mining and processing, aerospace, food processing, leather goods, textiles, construction, and energy. Morocco also has a tourism industry that is currently booming. The flag of Morocco consists of a five-pointed green star on a red background. The red and green colors are considered to be the colors of Islam. The red also represents the Moroccan dynasty. The star in the middle, called the Solomon Star, symbolizes the connection between Allah and the country. It also represents the five pillars of Islam. Morocco is one of the larger countries in North Africa, with a total land mass of around 717,000 square kilometers, or 277,000 square miles. It is bordered by Algeria to the east and Mauritania to the southwest. It also shares borders with the Spanish enclaves called the Plazas de Soberania. Rabat is the capital of Morocco. The highest point in Morocco is Jebel Tobkal, which rises 14,000 feet above sea level, or approximately 4,000 meters. The lowest point is at Sebka Tak, which is 193 feet or 59 meters below sea level. The most well-known feature of Morocco is its proximity to the Sahara Desert, one of the most famous deserts and one of the largest. In the entire world, Morocco's climate varies but is generally Mediterranean along the coasts. The closer one gets to the Sahara Desert, the more extreme the climate and the temperature. The maximum average temperature is 26 degrees Celsius, or 79 degrees Celsius. The minimum average temperature is 18 degrees Celsius, or 64 degrees Celsius. Morocco has a population of around 37 million, 99% of whom are Arab Amazigh. Arabic is the official language and people who live in Morocco are called Moroccans. Sunni Islam is virtually the only religion present in the country, with 99% of the population adhering to the faith. Although there still exists a small population of Christians, Jews, and Baha'i. Here are some sumptuous dishes to help sate your appetite when you visit Morocco. These dishes offer a taste of the country's rich culinary traditions and cultural heritage. First, you must try tagine, a slow-cooked stew of lamb or chicken topped with a blend of aromatic spices, fruits, and vegetables, all cooked in a tagine, the distinctive earthenware pot that gives the dish its name. This flavorful and hearty dish is a staple in Moroccan cuisine, 
symbolizing the country's love for communal meals and rich layered flavors. Next, there's couscous, a versatile grain dish often served as a base for stews. Made from steamed semolina wheat, couscous is light and fluffy, providing the perfect accompaniment to any stew, especially those with rich sauces like tagine. It is traditionally served on Fridays, the holy day in Islam, highlighting its cultural and religious significance. Lastly, you can try zaluk, a smoky eggplant salad made from roasted eggplants and tomatoes, seasoned with garlic, olive oil, and spices. This dish is typically served as a starter or side dish and showcases the Moroccan penchant for combining simple ingredients to create deep, smoky, and savory flavors. Morocco also prides itself on influential individuals. Here are some of them. First off, we have Mohamed Zafzaf, who helped develop Moroccan literature around the second half of the 20th century. Ibn Battuta, the famous explorer, was born in Tangier in present-day Morocco. We also have Ibn al-Banna al marakushi a polymath known for being a mathematician, astrologist, and Islamic scholar. If you like this video on Morocco, you'll love this next one.